open specification. And it's important to note that Rocket is uh, implemented specification first. So first, uh, they write documentation, then they write uh, schema code, then they write supporting code, and only then they implement it in Rocket. And the spec is uh, actually neutral. It's not uh, Linux specific, it's not, and it's uh, really clear. The base part, uh, first part is uh, app container image, which is specified just to be a tarball. It contains a JSON manifest and is uniquely uh, and a rootfs directory with files, and uh, is identified by just a simple checksum. So a sample manifest looks like that, and uh, here we have the name. We will be hopefully running the image uh, built from this uh, that has this manifest uh, today. It has the name, it has labels like version numbers, operating system and architecture. You can use this tree to discover the image which we'll see in a moment. It uh, has an application that it runs. It uh, executes the Redis server as specified user and group. Uh, it's got these mount points, which should be fulfilled when an application is started. It publishes uh, a Redis point. It's got a timestamp and dependencies. Dependencies is how the inheritance is uh, implemented in the spec. Uh, this uh, image depends on FreeBSD base, which means that its rootfs will be unpacked on top of the FreeBSD base uh, rootfs. The next part is the discovery, which is the means to get from ACI name and labels to the URL to download the image download, its PGP signature, and uh, where to discover a public key for the signature. So, for example, if you want to discover the FreeBSD base image with uh, these labels, what do we do? First, we try simple discovery. We just try to resolve this as a base URL. So we just uh, add version, OS, and architecture labels, put an ACI at the end for the image, ACI ask for the signature, and there is no, it would be pointless to discover a public key this way because it would be published the same way as the image. So for that image, the URL would look like that, and it is a 404, this doesn't exist. So if it fails, then, uh, uh, there is a meta discovery process, so we go to just the name, but add a get parameter on top of that. Look for certain HTML meta tags, which should redirect you uh, to the good URLs. And if that fails, strip the last component of the name, try again, go up and up and up in the URL hierarchy until un either we get the meta tags or you're out of components. So for the image we are looking for, we start from trying to look at this URL with 404s. So we go here, we get these meta tags. The AC discovery tag uh, specifies that for threeofcoins.net prefix, we have this URL template to download the image and its signature, and you have this URL that holds the public key. So in the end, we have these three URLs after rendering these URL templates. Uh, the runtime is a pod. A pod is a list of applications, and a pod can run more than one application, more than one image, and it will be, they will be launched in a shared execution context. They will share PID namespace, they will share network, IPC, and a host name, but each application, each app, will have its own separate file system. So it is a ch root inside the jail. And the more precise isolation dependencies can be also specified in the image manifest or in the pod manifest as an isolate. So the pod manifest will be running for the demo, it looks uh, like this, it's got Two applications, one is Redis, and uh, we've just seen the image manifest for this image. The second one is Tipboard, it is a uh, monitoring dashboard software uh, that I just chose to run because it's pretty. And there is one volume that uh, we share from the host, which is the 
data directory for tipboard where are the definitions of the panels. But this is not the complete information. It doesn't precisely identify the image and uh, not all the mounts are fulfilled. So tipboard is fulfilled. This mount has a volume, but Redis data dir does not have a volume. So uh, the implementation has to, it's called reify, which is fancy word for materialize, I think. Uh, the manifest, which means it has to resolve the name and slap a precise ID on it to be sure that if it has to recreate the container, it will reuse the exactly the same image. Same for the other image here, and it adds the missing Redis data dir volume, which is empty. It also assigned an IP address for the, for the new pod. And uh, the last part of the system is executor, which is it's basically the runtime. It's uh, from the executor's perspective, it is responsible for assigning pod UIDs, for rendering file system, setting up volumes, and so on and so on, and starting the application process. From the app perspective, it is responsible that the app executor is responsible that the app can see the proper environment variables, has UID, JID, and so on and so on. And inside the pod, we have an app meta application container metadata service. So there is an environment variable exposed that leads to the metadata service. So an application can see annotations from its manifest. It can see its full manifest and UID. And uh, it can see image manifest and image ID of the current app. Uh, this is uh, this way you can use annotations in the manifest to parameterize the behavior of the container. It also uh, the metadata service also provides way to cryptographically sign and verify signatures uh, of any data. So uh, one pod can ask uh, the metadata service to sign some piece of data, and then another pod can check with the metadata service that the other pod with that UID actually signed this data. Or the app can uh, ask a metadata service to sign its own data to pass it to the user, get it back from the user and see, yes, it's really mine, I really generated it. Jetpack itself is the not production ready, incomplete prototype implementation of the app C spec for FreeBSD. It's written in Go, it uses jails, it uses ZFS. As much as FreeBSD uh, emulation allows it, it can run Linux images. I cannot unfortunately demo it because uh, last update of current made it panic and I didn't update again and it's beyond my capabilities to try to debug it. But I've had it running, it should run 32-bit Linux uh, images on uh, stable on 10.1, uh, and uh, current with the recent uh, changes that in are inducing panic on my workstation, also introduced 64-bit Linux emulation, which means that uh, we can use rocket images for AMD64, and we can use, we can convert with Rocket's toolchain, we can convert Docker images to ACIs and also run them in Jetpack, as much as Linux emulation allows it. And as Rocket breaks uh, Docker monoculture on Linux, Jetpack hopefully will break Linux monoculture in the container world. And this Monday, Jetpack will have its half birthday. So we use ZFS storage for snapshots. Uh, it's based on clones. I actually am running out of time, but OK, great. Okay, so we'll fit the demo, I think. Each image's rootFS is uh, held by the runtime as a ZFS snapshot, and uh, dependent images are cloned from parent and then updated, and uh, apps, applications, uh, rootFS is also a clone from the parent. Uh, so provisioning is as quick as a ZFS clone. 
And each empty volume is also ZFS data set, which means that the, the empty volume uh, means that uh, it's a way to tell uh, runtime that I don't have a directory on disk. Please create a new directory for this volume. And if it's a data set, we can snapshot it, we can backup it, we can clone it. And in the long run, we want to be able to say, just snapshot this application with all its uh, volumes and make me a copy, or make me a copy with a new version of the image. The runtime itself uses JS for isolation and CH root inside uh, for the extra file system isolation. I cons I'm also considering using nested jails for uh, up-level isolators, but it's a long shot. And uh, volumes are null FS mounted from the host or from the actual volume directory from the actual ZFS data set into the application root FS. Image building is uh, turns, uh, I was afraid of implementing that, but it turned out to be really simple process because it's just creating a pod from the parent image, copying build deer, and in the long run I will make the build deer, build deer a volume. Right now it's a copy. It runs the build command inside the builder, inside the pod, and the builder can either include the new manifest or can build it inside the pod. We'll see why uh, in a moment. And just after the build script is done, we use pod rootfs as new image rootfs, which means that it is does not include any new syntax, any new Jetpack file to build. Uh, you can just provide any kind of build script. You're a chef person, go on, run chef solo. You can run make, and there are sample make macros to make it easier. You can run shell, and this is uh, how I process Linux pods. You can basically use any tool that you want as long as it is a command. So an example build script, example make file to build the tipboard image, which uh, will be running as a demo. Uh, it's just first is a make in cloud path. We specify parent image. We specify packages uh, we want installed and the targets are automatically added. And after the packages are installed, the build target, the make file is copied into the pod and this file, the Jetpack image MK file is copied as well. So the build part inside the pod is executed from the same make file. So we can have in a single file the preparation outside on the host and the build process inside. So build just prepares a Python virtual env, installs some files, runs some siblings, and generates the manifest. And uh, generation of the manifest is uh, does uh, execute inside jail, does execute inside the build pod, because here you can see, we don't specify the version. We ask the tip board we just installed for the version, and we use it here in the manifest. We don't need to uh, specify the version, make file just install the newest and uh, the manifest generated will have the proper uh, version inside. And here we can see from the same image uh, the settings.py file, uh, which is example of using the metadata service because we are getting the metadata URL from environment. We just get the IP address annotation, which we have just seen that uh, is added during pod creation and use this as a host for Redis to listen on. So there's still a lot to do. There's custom isolators, there's uh, proper network management, and uh, I forgot to write this, vImage support would be great as well, and uh, Capsicum would be a great addition. UI, the UI is a mess, and the code needs uh, refactoring, which is probably uh, what I will focus on after the conference. There's a lot of boring stuff to do. 
documentations, acceptance tests, and uh, if somebody has an idea how to test something this complex, I'd be happy to hear it. My best idea right now is to use uh, Cucumber, but because mm, I used a lot of Ruby before, but maybe there's something better. Uh, the native multi app pod support because uh, right now only one application can be started uh, at a time so we need we will need to open multiple terminals proper logging that comes with that Pro that's more or less the laundry list for 010 and for first actually numbered release so it's in pretty early stage but it works and we're going to see it as uh, we have some extra time. Uh, first thing is that uh, we will, I will create a pod. I have the images. Uh, I have the, already built the demo images, tipboard and redis uh, to have here and to avoid uh, losing time for downloading the packages. So I will just start the pod. Jetpack. Save ID. And we'll use the template, uh, not the reified one. The Jetpack current time will reify it. Don't look too much at the format of the output. It will be reworked, it will be prettier. But you can see that it inserts empty volume for Redis data directory. It created a new pod, assigned it to UID. So we have the new pod with two apps. So we'll start the two apps right now. As we don't have any uh, process management, we just need to run the app separately on the terminal. So first we run Redis. In the second terminal we run the tipboard app. And uh, to just fit the data, to fit the board data, we'll, we'll run the client. We can see here that uh, the client is receiving data. And On the IP uh, of the pod, we can see. Mm -hmm. Well, we should be seeing a bit of text on the left hand panels, I will just restart the client. Not this. This is the browser. Oh, 
Okay, and we he here we can see a pretty monitoring panel that runs from the containerized images from the containerized from from the pods. Let's shut that down right now. Destroy the pod, clean up after ourselves. And I have no idea, maybe somebody knows, why the pod that did any network input output lingers so long in a dying state. It can't be a minute. If somebody knows that, catch me after the talk, please. I'd be happy to know that. And the second piece of demo I would, I would like to show is uh, I prepared and published an image besides the besides the FreeBSD base image. I prepared the port builder image, which basically is the base system plus PKG binary plus uh, ports dialog that can be used by mounting some volumes uh, to test building of ports on in a clean system. So we just create a pod. We save it ID for later. We run it already. We run it uh, immediately. We mount ports, dist files, and the ports. They are mounted separately because the ports volume is read only to avoid writing anywhere to the host system. And I can choose to share these files, or I, if I skip it, uh, Jetpack will create an empty volume and, will, and the pod will download the dist files on its own. And I, here is the port, here is the image name, and an annotation to add that port name is misc slash figlet. And the image right now is not here. We don't have an image named uh, tier of coins net port builder. And we don't have any trusted G, uh, GPG keys. So let's do that. Right, uh, Jetpack will first do the discovery, and the font is too big, but you can see, and it will soon scroll, but you can see that it uses uh, URLs just like the ones uh, in the discovery part of the presentation. Uh, it will, it downloads the image, it did download the signature, Let's wait until it completes. It uh, notice that it doesn't have any, it doesn't have the public key and it's attempting the discovery, downloads and asks me if I want to trust it. Yes, I know that key. Uh, I generated it myself. The image is imported. Oh, I didn't start the metadata service. This. Mm. But the pod is already cr created. It is. Uh, it does have a port builder. So if I just run that pod. Uh, this will automatically start the app again, and it will start make again. So it's also useful if make fails. I can simply restart it in the same pod. Mm. We don't want to be the docs. And it's done. I can run the console.
we just built a port on a clean system. Again, once we're done, let's clean up. That would be it. Any questions, remarks? Yes? Is it Jetpack application uh, that you are using? Excuse me? Is it Jetpack application that you are using? Do you have to be a privileged user to set up, to set up the Hurt containers? Uh, Yes, I have uh, to be a privileged user. It does not install set UID right now, and it won't be set UID. It's up to you to, up to the administrator to configure sudoers, file, and uh, aliases. Right now, I've got, uh, I started because I have entry in sudoers and a wrapper script. Yes? Uh, yes, uh, right after, uh, after the talk I will upload them to speaker deck. I will tweet it and uh, hopefully the conference account will also retweet that. The specification tells, uh, specifies uh, that there is a pre-start hook that runs always as root inside the container and post-stop, and uh, which uh, can be used to, for example, generate configuration as root while the main application runs as unprivileged user. But there are no runtime signals. There's no way to, for example, run a make job uh, when, I s when I want something to happen. The specification does not uh, support any extra signals. But probably if there is any real need, it can be discussed on the APSI spec GitHub. Yes? I can uh, I can convert uh, Docker images to the ACI images. Uh, there are tools for that. They can run in Rocket and uh, as soon as uh, Linux emulation will stop panicking with Jetpack and uh, the 64-bit emulation is stable because right now the 64-bit Linux syscall emulation is only on uh, current, only if you track SVN. Uh, but then, as to the extent implemented by FreeBSD emulator, uh, it will be possible to run Linux ACIs. The specification says that uh, the main isolation across the applications is the CH root, and the general uh, general isolation things like set our limit and so on that don't need a uh, jail. And on Linux in Rocket, it's implemented that uh, the application itself is, has a rootfs that runs systemd which starts each application in the pod rootfs is a systemd that starts each application in its own ch root but without any further isolation 
Yes, and uh, right now this is not needed. Possibly to implement so it will be needed to implement some uh, extra isolators on the up level, but only if it's possible to start the jail, but still share the PID namespace, still uh, share network devices, so child jail should be able to share networking with uh, upper level jail, but I'm not sure about PID, I didn't give it much thought, and uh, it's not really required by spec, so it will be done if it makes anything easier or possible. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>